Okay, and we'll wrap things up with um, one in four Highland at third ranked class A Regina, which is five and one, has won five in a row uh, by a combined score of 229 to 84. Uh, already the district champions. Um, this one, at least on paper, looks, looks like uh, it, it's, it, it would take a lot for the Regals not to come out of this one with another win. It, we talked about this last week when I kind of said, hey, they're probably, in my eyes, they're the team to beat in A. Regina's just, they're, they're good. You know, we talked, again, coaching staff, everything you're looking for. But they're just quarterback. Playing. Ex experience, good running yep. game, good receivers, yep. tough defense. Yeah, they they seem to have it all. They're playing and they're playing really well. You know, I mean, that's the thing too is they're, you know, again, like I mentioned with Solon, we we talked about this last week. How many teams do we have that have won three in a row, won four yeah. in a row, won five in a row? They they seem to be, and they've done that for years. Where they're players, people always talk about it. You don't always do it. They've done a really good job of playing their best games to get to the Uni Dome or at the Uni Dome. They've kind of got that down to a science. You know, they're used to that longer season, how to handle that. But a couple notes I took on them. They've given up 15. So you look at the scores, and, and they've always done a really good job. And this is something that has been really fun to talk to their coaches about. They do a really good job of getting, when they have the opportunity, which in some lopsided games, which they've had, they do a really good job of getting quality reps mm. for one through however many they dress. Right. And then that next year, those kids have had some game reps and then they get a few more game reps and they, you know, and that's kind of how you build that tradition that they have getting those kids experience, but they've given up 15 points in the first half of district games this year. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. They've obviously been dominant. So, I mean, if you look at some of the final scores, they've given up some points here and there, but, only 15 of those. And I think 12 of those came in that Lisbon game. So I think in their other three district games, they've given up a field goal in the first half. So they've really been dominant. And then offensively, the thing, their, their numbers are great. 40.3 points a game, 419 yards a game. They're averaging 7.6 yards per play on the season, over nine in their four district games. And they've been over 10 in two of those district games, which is I mean, it's incredible if, you, if you're into that stat. You know, I mean, you're averaging a first down every time you snap it. Right. But what I like most about them offensively, Rob, is the balance. We talked about this on the last pod with Theo Coley in the backfield, but you can't get much better than this. They're averaging 420 yards, give or take a game, 195 rushing, 224 passing. And, I mean, that's, you know, maybe some coaches would say I'd rather average 300 rushing and 100 passing, but that's pretty – I mean – we talked about it, Ashton Cook, senior quarterback, Alec Wick, great receiver. But when you can be that close to 50-50 on, on how you get your yards, you're just – you're really tough for a high school defense to, to stop. I mean, you, you don't have a lot of things that you can key on. And I think that's the biggest key for them right now is they're playing well, but they have a lot of options. They can beat you a lot of ways. So Yeah, yeah that's uh, – like we talked about, I think, on Monday on the Seven Nation, it's – it's that balance that's, that stresses a defense and makes it much, much tougher to prepare for. Um, so, you know, we can do this. The coach, the Regina coaches won't do this. They'll act like they're playing the 85 Bears to their players because they want them to, to be sharp and at their best. But in a game like this, as you're moving towards the playoffs, Ryan, what are you trying to accomplish as a team? Because let's just assume that what we see on paper is Regina's going to get out to a big lead here. What, what do you hope to accomplish in a week like this to get yourself best prepared for the playoffs? Well, I know, like I said, they've done a great job of getting guys reps. But right. maybe what they're trying to do is, you know, maybe see how some guys handle some different situations. Mm -hmm. If you can, you know, put some guys in some different spots. But then, and I, we, again, I don't, I, without seeing the bracket, you don't know exactly how it's going to work. And this year is a little bit different. I think that's a great point, Rob. And, and it would be interesting to talk to some of these coaches about it. They're going into this week and they don't know what it's going to look like. Because in past years, you know if you – in week nine, if we win and we're in, we play next week at 7 o'clock. You know? Right. For this week, you could be going, hey, we're not positive. Like, we might not play next week. We might play the week after that, which creates a different – like, you, everybody likes a bye. I should say a lot of people do. So we feel like we're maybe rusty off that. What do we do for those, you know, 10, 13 days? 
what I'm sure, that, what I'm guessing, I'm not going to say sure, but what I'm guessing their emphasis is, is let's be really sharp. I mean, if we're going to have, if you guys are going to get 35 snaps, you know, let's make sure we have 35 really good snaps and we really feel good about where we're at, um, you know, going into next week. If that's a game, that game becomes, you know, every game from that point on becomes potentially your last game. So let's be ready to play our best. And if that's a, if that's a bye week for a team like that, that's a district champion, let's make sure that we go into that feeling good about where we were at. You know, I mean, I think the worst thing that can happen in a game like this is, yeah, you, know, you slog. You, I, mean, you, I mean, I don't want to say that they couldn't lose. Like, let's be honest. I mean, it's sports, right? right? But I think the worst thing that can happen is if you, you don't feel good. The worst thing that can happen in a win is you don't feel good about how you got there, right? You know, right. so I think they're probably putting an emphasis on let's really feel good about where we're at. And then, you know, if you get – and that's the other thing, too, is even in a seven-game season, you know this, there's going to be some bumps and bruises that aren't necessarily injuries, but getting some of these kids some rest sometime isn't always, isn't always the worst thing either, you know. Maybe not for the teams that had a three-week break. Maybe for those teams you just want as many reps as you can possibly get. But in 2020 – and, and, I mean, we should bring that up, too. I'll, I'll never stop saying this. I don't care if people tell me to stop saying this. In, 20, in this year, I just enjoy it, man. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, we can talk all this analysis or whatever, but hopefully they go out there and they have a great time playing high school football because who knows what's going to happen next week, right? right? I mean, so. But I think that's the biggest thing is you try to be really sharp with what you're doing, maybe put some guys in, in some different positions that you could see them being in in a couple of weeks. but. Just try to be really, really efficient with what you do. Clean football. Don't turn it over. Yeah. No, not yeah. a lot of, you know, limit penalties, things like that. Yeah, that makes a lot right. of sense. 